All right, what's up there, YouTube? All right, today I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, benchmarks and gaming benchmarks and benchmarks for Ryzen. Gaming benchmarks are good for to a point. They tell a general feel of how well a processor is doing. But if you look over the, over the years, like back five, eight years ago, games were only taking advantage of single thread, a single thread. So using the same type of games to benchmark today isn't indicative of the processors today. Perfect example, five or six years ago, all our phones were single core processors. All our computers were dual core, possibly quad core for consumer, consumer grade. Dual core, possibly quad core if they got a real high end. You go to Best Buy five or ten years ago, five to eight years ago, and most of the most of the processors were i3 or i5. Like a laptop had i3 in it. I bought a laptop. It was about five or six years ago. Had an i3 in it. Five years ago, when when they when they would talk about you know should you upgrade, what's the fastest processor? They would say an i5 will do you just fine because most games, if you game an i5 would have been just fine. Not until recently has the game start really pushing the, the limits of the processor as far as on single threads. So like a game that's not really optimized very well, like say Grand Theft Auto 5, it's not very well optimized. So the higher speed your processor was, the better for a game like Grand Theft Auto 5. As the game started getting better, if you look back at, at history, if look back at DirectX 11, the big deal about DirectX 11 that Microsoft sold when they first were promoting DX11 over DX10. Now DX10 was mostly single thread, sing, you know, dual core possibly, you know, mostly single threaded use was DirectX 10. DirectX 11, they pushed it, if you look it up on Wikipedia, their big push was to try and make multi-threading easier to do for games. Why? Why would they care about multi-threading for games? It's a simple reason. This right here. So your phone is, this is an octa-core phone. This phone has several th cores in it. So when they started doing the, the, when Microsoft started making DirectX 11, let's make it for phones, make it for mobile. See, Microsoft's idea was to make their Windows 10 one unified operating system that will work on mobile because I know I had a Windows, Windows phone forever. I just got rid of my Windows phone to get a, a Android phone. And I've had Android phones before. I had a, I had a Note 2 and then I had a, um, I had another Android phone. I had a, the Nexus 6P, and then I got this ZTE phone because it just seems to work well with the car and everything. But um, and Microsoft didn't update th their later phones. They kind of dropped the ball on them, and I'm waiting for the Surface phone to come out. And when that comes out, I'll probably end up getting one. But if you look, Microsoft was trying to push multi-threading so that their games, the games on Windows would take advantage of multiple cores in phones and tablets and mobile devices as well as multiple threads in a computer. DirectX 11 started it, pushed it real big. DirectX, DirectX 12 pushed it even further. DX 12 on Windows 10 is much easier to code for multiple threads to take advantage of multiple threads because they want a unified, they want you to be able to buy a game for the Xbox Scorpio and have it work on Windows 10 PC and have it work on your, your Windows phone and have it work where you buy it once and it works across all your platforms. That's the whole reason why they're making their operating system the way they are. If you judge based on five or eight years ago, the performance for a processor for a test, you're not really figuring for now. You've got to look at the newest titles. And granted, some of the newer titles still aren't taking advantage of a Ryzen like they should, but they are taking advantage of more cores. If you look at Battlefield 1, for instance, DICE has really been pushing multiple cores to, to work better. Um, ID Software, id Software, 
when they made uh, Doom. Doom uses multiple cores, especially when they use like the open end. They're, Doom is, uh, ID Software has always been a friend of AMD and ATI. They wanted to have a freedom of, you know, open source type of stuff. That's why they went with OpenGL instead of DirectX. That's why they went with Vulkan. That's why they did, that's why they do these things is because they don't like to be tied to one company like NVIDIA using their game software to tie you to NVIDIA to make it play better on NVIDIA hardware. My, my point was if you're gonna if you're gonna do a if you're gonna do a, a benchmark of CPUs it needs to be an even benchmark that evenly taxes the CPU the same. So you can't say well here's you can you could say well see this 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 program works much better on X processor on AMD processors. This one works much better. And then on Intel processors, it doesn't work as well, not because it's not taxing the processor, but because it's because it's not taxing the processor. So say say you ran a benchmark that taxed the AMD processor, all threads, all cores at like 95% for the for the benchmark. So it's testing that processor to its limit. And then you put it on an Intel system and you put it on an i7, 7700 or 68, whatever, you know, a six core, eight core, and it's only taxing, say, four of the cores out of the eight or uh, eight out of the 16. It's only taxing half of them. The other ones are dropping off. Then that's not really a fair to Intel because it's not really pushing that processor to its limit. Even though it's a benchmark saying, "Hey, this benchmark is this this it shows the AMD as being much better." It's not really showing the true power of that processor because it's not pushing that processor to its limit. So it's that's an optimization problem in software. That's not a problem with the hardware. So that's why it's kind of irritating to see some you know these these gamers do, do testing and they test at 1080p and it's getting 200 frames per second on some game and it's taxing you know with with single thread as opposed to and the AMD sitting there going okay well one thread is you know at 85 percent and the others are at 20 percent so it's not really using my pro it's not using the processor who's that whose fault is that is that AMD's fault or is that the software's fault I say it's the software's fault if the software isn't taxing the thing then you can't really use that software as a judge of the processing power you all all it tells you is that software is more optimized for Intel or that software is more optimized for AMD that's why benchmarks like Cinebench that tax all the threads at 95% on all processors evenly it taxes the the 7700k all four eight threads at 95% it taxes the uh, Ryzen like the one sitting on my desk back here it taxes the Ryzen all 16 threads eight cores at 95% it you know it's the same as like like I said before when you're rendering if it's if it's an even test if it's taxing both the processors the same then you're actually judging the processing power of that processor so if the if the Ryzen on 16 threads falls behind the Intel counterpart part with 16 threads and they're both taxed at 95 percent then the Intel counter, counterpart is better is a better processor it's actually performing more IPC instructions per clock on all threads on the same test equally that's why I, I, I like to use a rendering test I render something on this Intel system and I'll take the same hard drive out which my hard drive sitting there take the hard drive out put it in all the files are on the hard drive I didn't take and swap the files to an SSD to make the MD look better I didn't swap anything everything else being equal as equal as I can make them um, everything else being equal does this one render faster than the other one? They're both being taxed at, in the 90%. All threads are being taxed the same. All threads are being utilized. Is this processor finishing the job faster than this processor? If they're all equal and one is finishing the job faster than the other one, that's a better processor. There's no discrepancy when it comes to whether or not the software is taking advantage of the processor. You can't, when you, when you take a game that's, built for DirectX 10 or DirectX 11 
and it's not a multi-threaded game. It's a single thread, and you use it in a comparison with a with a processor that's a multi-threaded processor, and you say, "See, the single-threaded works. It works much better on this single-threaded." Then it's not really, if it's not taxing that processor, all the cores or all the threads equally, all it's giving you is one little slice of that one thread being more powerful. When in reality, in the future, and from here on out, from the past five years on, everything is going to be for multi-thread. It, it's obvious it's going to be multi-threaded because our phones are for octa-core. Everything is going to a multiple core because that makes more sense. Have more threat, more cores to handle more tasks, you can get the task done quicker. My idea, that's my explanation of, of how benchmarking should be done. Now, I'm not a, an expert benchmarker. Obviously, I don't benchmark for a living, and I, I just, I look at what other people do, but I just got my, my RAM in. This is my 32 gigs of um, Corsair Vengeance LPX. I was, I went with the 60, 60, uh, 16 gig kit before I'm gonna open it now, because let me get my knife, pow, bam. All right, let me get my knife, tear this thing open, cut this thing open. This is my, my uh, 32 gig kit. I got the 16 gig kit of uh, 3000 RAM, and it was white, and you know, I got the, I got the, black, the black kit this time, because they didn't have this in white. I wish they had it in white. But this is only uh, 26, uh, 2666 megahertz. Now I'm hoping these are good Samsung chips, which is what they're, you know. I'm hoping it's basically the same as it's black PCBs. They look good. Let's take a look at these. You like how I, I look over the top of my glasses? I'm getting old. I need, I need some bifocals or something. Because I can't see stuff up close with my glasses. So these are Vengeance DDR4 2666. All right, these are all single-sided. Excellent. Looking at it, there's RAM chips on one side of the on one side of the board, which is ideal for for Ryzen. Ryzen uh, AMD's Ryzen systems are a little bit finicky when it comes to RAM, and having dual-sided chips, chips on both sides of the PCB, isn't as ideal. So they want you to have chips on one side, so I see four there and four there, there's your, there's your four eight, and then there's nothing on the other side without taking the heat spreader out, off. Maybe I'll paint them. Should I paint these white? You know, what would look cool would, if I put like white stripes on it? Nobody has white, black and white striped RAM. Maybe I should get a, like a paint kit while I'm waiting for my thing. What do you guys think? Do you think I should do a little DIY and paint the, paint the stripes white on here? Get a little paintbrush and paint them white. I'm still going to try and overclock these to 2666. I won't go for the higher speed because, you know, 32 gigs of RAM is better for me than 16. You know, I had 24 in my system. This, this, my Intel system has 24 gigs of DDR3. It's six sticks of, six sticks of RAM. Um, and I, fill up 24 gigs of RAM pretty easy with my programs when I'm running After Effects and Premiere and uh, Audition and Encore and if you see if you check out my channel you'll see I've done some tutorials on Premiere and editing multi-camera and stuff like that anyway um, for me a more RAM is better I wanted to go with 64 gigs but they said that that's even pickier than that Ryzen is even pickier than that for um, 64 gigs. You can get a 64 gig kit, but I'm just going to go with 32 gigs for now and wait. Now they're do, coming out with the X399 or whatever, the 16 core 32 thread Ryzen. It's only like 3.2 gigahertz or something like that. It's like real low. So it's more of a, it's, it's supposed to be more of a server based chip, but they're actually coming out with it with their enthusiast for, uh, thing with more lanes and all that type of but I don't know if I'll need that because that was my that was my big toss-up between this and an x99 system was I didn't really need all the PCI lanes because I'm, I'm never going to run more than one graphics card I mean I don't think I am I could run two in that in my in my Ryzen system but I don't really need to I mean I just rather have one faster card I'd rather have like the GTX 1080 Ti or the Vega. I'm waiting on Vega. I'll make do with what I have until Vega comes out. What are you guys thoughts on this? Do you think 
a benchmark should be actually tax all the cores evenly. And if, if both processors are taxed evenly on all the cores, the one that's faster is the better processor. Or is it only for only like if one is actually pushing one thread and that that system is getting, you know, 180 frames per second, and then the Ryzen system at low, you know, low resolution isn't getting, you know, 150. If that, you know, it's getting 20 more frames per second, does that make a difference to you? Do you really need that? It's not a matter of need, though, because I do, I do play Twitch games, and I'm looking forward to Quake Champions, um, which is free to play, by the way. That's a cool thing. They came out with this free to play, so, you know, my granddaughter can play it. But anyway, the Twitch games, you have to have like the fa the highest frames per second. You want at least you want to have a minimum of 60. There's the thing also. You want to have the best minimum frames. You don't want to dip below 60 frames per second. So if if I can get a card that a card and a processor that will keep me over 100 frames per second and not dip below 60 then no matter how much action is going on on screen my gameplay will be nice and smooth that's the biggest deal for playing a twitch game like quake arena or quake champions whatever you want to call them if you get in a big fight and it starts lagging in any way you'll get killed so in, in the game obviously you don't get killed in real life that would suck to play a game and it killed you in real life <laughs> so it would more than suck it'd be like weird you play in a game and it kills you <laughs> i'd just like to have a game like that death game you know are you gamers out there that are into into rising and stuff like that and into saving money for because that's that's what i always did before was do you, do you need 170 frames per second to make the, your game playable? Maybe you've got a 144 megahertz monitor and you want to stay at 144 megahertz. You don't want to dip below. Say you play a game that's not as taxing on the graphics card like CSGO. You know, maybe that, for that test, if you're a, a, like a pro style gamer that plays like CSGO that's not graphically intense, that you want to throw a GTX... 1070 in there and or 1080 and set it to 1080p and just get 150 frames per second and have it not dip below that because you got free sync or g-sync on your monitor and you don't want it to dip below and get any tearing you want the fastest absolute fastest thing maybe that's what you need if that's the case then maybe you should be getting a, a the i7 7700k you know realistically maybe that's it but I don't think there's that many people out there that actually are like like need that. I watch a lot of reviews on monitors and stuff because I've been wanting to upgrade monitors. Even when they get like one of these, you know, wides, uh, like not usually not even the ultra wides, just the regular monitor, like a 27 inch or something like that. They'll have it'll have 144 megahertz, and they'll like that. But then they'll the people that I watch, like Linus and different, they'll when they get like one of the ultra wides it's not 144 megahertz and they think it's the best monitor ever so maybe you don't really i mean as long as it doesn't go below 60 we're good right so 60 frames per second minimum and then everything after that is you know candy it's gravy sopping up gravy with biscuits give me some biscuits because i got gravy everywhere i need to be sopped up you guys let me know in the comments below you know Tell me what you think. Do you do you think that's the best way to uh, judge a processor, a CPU, and a system based on how many you know how fast it renders something or how fast that you know if it's pushing everything to the max? Does that is that the true test of a processor or how fast how many frames per second it gets in Battlefield One? Does it getting a few extra frames? But does it matter if one processor isn't pushed as much as the other? Doesn't that say that that processor is not the, is the processor isn't the bottleneck, it's optimization. But now that they're, they are keeping up with Intel and bypassing Intel in a lot of cases, doesn't that show the true performance of a processor? Let me know. Comment below and let me know. And also, you know, give me a thumbs up. I'm still waiting on my motherboard return. I returned my motherboard to Newegg. I shipped it back. It's supposed to be arriving like today or tomorrow in California. It takes like a week to get there. 
I would have sent it faster, but I just used their service because, you know, I bought it through them and there was a problem with the motherboard, so I sent it back. Until that comes back in, I've got memory, I've got everything ready to go, and I'm editing again on my old system, which still works, you know, but it really was nicer <laughs> editing on the Ryzen system. I'm not going to lie, the Ryzen system did edit much smoother on everything, and I don't know if it was because of the NVMe, if it was because of the higher speed, bus speed, you know, going from US, the SATA 3 and to SATA 6, because this is SATA 3, this is an older system, so it's like SATA 3, it doesn't get the speed that the other one had, the other one read off of the drives faster too. I had like an external card in here to try and get SATA 6 and I couldn't, it wasn't, I was messing up so I took it out just temporarily and plugged these back in. But it works, it just doesn't work as well as the Ryzen system for just editing. After editing for a week on that Ryzen system, I really miss it. Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Thumbs down if you thought it sucked and you know, you hated it. Uh, and comment below, let me know what you think. And you know, subscribe. Subscribe to my channel. I try to release a video every once in a while, even if I'm just, you know, discussing things. I got some other stuff I'm going to release a video on. I'll show you some cool stuff. This little thing here, it's a Pico dolly. It's a little dolly for your thing, and you can turn it so you can get those tra those track shots. And on a little curved section of the video of the memory with this, and I turned it and curved it around the memory pretty cool looking little tool you don't have to have expensive tools to make your videos look good you can do it with little cheap little things like this i'll talk to you later be good youtube see ya